Alhamdulillah, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam. <clears throat> everything in this world, everything we, 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 you want to do in this world, requires motivation. You need to have some sort of uh, motivation in your life. Uh, a prize, uh, something good you're working for. An end, a goal, a result. In this dunya, in our worldly affair, we find, mashallah, people are striving very, very, very hard for, you know, work, building houses, buying cars, mashallah, you know, things of dunya. We always find ourselves motivated to do these things. Any action that will lead you to be rich, be famous, be known, always there's, there's this push, there's this you know, motivation that's within us for things of, of, the, of this world, for things of this dunya. If you ask yourself, why do I, ask any, be honest with yourself, why do I go work, you know, eight hours a day, ten hours a day, some people 12 hours a day, maybe we'll do a dou double shift. No one really, very, very few people, there is some people, but very, very few people in the world really, really enjoy their work. The reason why we work, and we work hard, it's because of the wages at the end. True or not? So if I say to, you know, if I give this offer to the world, I say, you know, please, you know, everyone has to work for, for free from now on. No wages at the, end of the, at the end of the week or at the end of the month. Very, very, very little people will stay in the, in the work. True or not? People will they leave work. Why? Because they're working mainly because of these wages that they're getting. This is what keeps them going. When he has a hard day, wakes up tired, still has to go to work. Why? Why does he have to go to work? He remembers, uh, if I don't go to work, one day will be cancelled off my wages. It's not worth it, man. I make 100 bucks a day, I make whatever it is a day, $150 a day. No, 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 no. I'll go. Even though you're tired, you, you'll push yourself. Why? Because your eyes are on this goal. Your eyes are on this, you know, beautiful thing, this prize you get at the end of the week. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, with deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His mercy, from His rahmah subhanahu wa ta'ala, prepared the prize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king of kings. There's no burden on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one forces Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything at His will subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever He wants, He subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses. He could have created us in this world and said, worship me. Do one, two, three, four, and stay away from one, two, three, four, and no prize at the end. Why should we do this? Because I said so. True or not? Allah could have created the world with such a system that you have to work. Why? Because I'm Allah. I'm your Lord. I decided that this, this should happen. Finish. You work or you get punished. No prize. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His extreme mercy, from His extreme generosity, subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only did He say, worship me and live a happy life in this world, but no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared a beautiful paradise for people who work hard in this world. Follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa whether male or female, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them this absolutely yani amazing and unbelievable prize. This Jannah, my brothers and sisters. It's something, like I said, if we talk from now, if we talk from now to Judgment Day, all the ulama of the world sit there and discuss with, with all human beings in the world how beautiful Jannah is, we won't give Jannah, we won't give Paradise, it's due rights. It's something above our perception, above our understanding, something so beautiful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and He decided that this is the prize for my obedient slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to please someone. There's no barriers, no limits to Allah's decision. But our problem nowadays with deen, our problem, why do we struggle practicing our deen? Why do we struggle waking up for tahajjud? Why are we struggling, you know, to read Qur'an, memorize Qur'an, call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Why are we struggling to come to the masjid? Why is the female struggling to putting the scarf on, putting the hijab on, cover herself properly? Because very, very unfortunately, very little motivation is in our hearts. Although we've heard of Jannah before, we've heard of paradise before, we've heard of, we've heard of Allah's, what Allah has prepared for the pious, believing in these good actions of the, we've heard it all. But, like, I, like we always say in our talks, there's a huge difference between information you have in your head and something firm you have in your heart. Something there, always there, bugging you, moving you, pushing you for paradise. Like the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. The difference between us and them, and them is not usually, you know, Allah, they know something we didn't know. Of course they saw Rasulullah sallam. They have, they had this, this blessing of being around him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Clearly they had some more knowledge. But there's, there's certain things where we share the same knowledge. But the difference is they had this firm belief. This firm belief in the heart, this real desire. If you ask anyone, brother, do you want to enter Jannah? Sister, do you want to go to Jannah? The answer is no, the answer is common. But how, do you, how much do you want to enter Jannah? How much is that feeling in your heart? That, that desire, that wish, that shawq? How much of it is in your heart? Is it just there, you know? Uh, how, how often do you think of Jannah, of paradise in your day? Before you sleep, do you, is paradise your concern? When you wake up, is paradise your concern? Who, who is, you know, is, is always thinking like, like, uh, like a lover, you know, missing his, uh, his loved one. Likewise, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu were like this. You read the stories and we get amazed how much love and desire they had for paradise. Something is different. You hear, for example, the story of Subhanallah, one of the companions called Umayr ibn al-Haman. A very, very famous story, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In the battle of Badr, one of the, the, one of the first battles of Islam, where the, the kuffar came attacking the Muslims, and Rasulullah went out for them in, in, uh, on the wells of Badr, and very, 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 very small minority of, mashallah, Muslims at the time, maybe 313, as the ulama say, facing a 1,000 strong army on horses, prepared, and the Muslims are very, very weak. Imagine your condition at the time, how much fear you will have in your heart. And Umayr ibn Hamam radiallahu anhu is there, and he is eating some dates in his hand, maybe in the middle, middle of the battle, just, you know, taking a rest, eating some dates. And then Rasulullah sallallahu says, in the, in the hadith, he says, who, who, whoever, you know, stops these mushrikeen, stops these infidels from the harm they're doing to the Muslims. I promise him Jannah in one narration. In another narration, Umayr ibn Hamam asked himself and said, O Prophet of Allah, أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ قُتِلْتُ O Prophet of Allah, if I actually, you know, get martyred in this battle, where do I go? Rasulullah said, قَالَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ you, you go to paradise straight. So Umayr radiallahu anhu looked in the dates in his hands. How long would the dates take to eat? But he said, Oh, by Allah, Wallahi, لأن أحيا حتى آكل تمراتي هذه إنها لحياة طويلة. By Allah, if I will live until I actually have to finish these dates in my hands, it's a very, very long life. And he chucked the dates on his, chucked the dates, threw the dates away, and threw, threw, threw himself into the battle and died as a martyr رضي الله تعالى عنه. The difference between us and him is what his his shawq, his desire. To enter paradise, overcame all the desires of this world. Is there anything of more sacrifice than giving your own life for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Nothing more. So he, his love for Jannah, his love for paradise, surpassed all other loves, all other feelings he has in his heart. Oh, he loves his wife, he loves his kids, he loves his family, he loves his city, he loves his house. But the love for paradise surpassed all this. It overcame all this. So it, even love of the food. Throw the food. I will wait until I eat a couple of dates. Go, Bismillah. Go, go to paradise. Another story, subhanAllah, Anas ibn Nadr radiallahu anhu. The uncle of Anas ibn Malik. Also a very, very famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In the battle of Uhud, when the Muslimin, when the Muslims at the time, they are in Kashafu. In the battle, very, very famous story. Some of the, you know, the rumors started spreading. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was killed. Some Muslims fled, they left the army, the hypocrites, before even the army, before the, the battle started, they, they took one third of the army and left very, very shaky grounds. 
And then some, some Sahaba started to flee the battle. So Anas radiallahu anhu raised it. Look, look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raised, raised his head and said, Oh Allah, I, in, Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka min ma fa'ala ha'ula. Ya Allah, I'm free from the actions of these infidels that are, you know, fighting the deen of Allah. And I, I beg you for forgiveness. And I apologize for what my companions are doing. And then he jetted, Allahu Akbar, he, he ran to the middle of the, uh, the Kuffar campaign, the infidels campaign. They camp, the camp. He actually jumped into the battle. On the way he meets Sa'd ibn Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala an. He says, Ya Sa'd, O oh, Sa'd, Al-Jannah, O oh, Sa'd, Paradise. Walladhi nafsi biyadihi, O oh, Sa'd, I can smell the fragrance of Paradise. Ni ma'atuhud. And he threw himself, Allah Akbar, he took himself to the battle. And Sa'd radiallahu anhu says, فَوَاللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ مَا صَنَعْ A Prophet of Allah, I could not do what this man did. مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ مَا صَنَعْ He actually, after the battle, they found him with approximately maybe 70 or more or maybe 80 wounds إِمَّا ضَرْبَةً بِسَيْفِ A hit with a sword or a stroke with a rumf with a spear. الله أكبر Only his sister could identify him from his banan, from the tip of his finger. All wounded, مثل به المشركون رضي الله تعالى the Muslim, the the kafir at the time they mutilated his 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 body, his corpse. رضي الله تعالى عنه and all why? Because of Jannah, because of paradise, true iman, true love for this place. We have we have to ask ourselves. I ask myself personally. It's very easy to say, Allah, like I said, I want to enter paradise. How much? How much do you have love for this place? What have you really done? How much effort? How much sacrifice are you giving? To enter the paradise, the, to, to, to reach the prize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believing people. This is why it is very important to always, in our discussions, in our talks, in our gatherings, we should always remember paradise. Always remember the gift Allah has prepared. Always remember the prize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believing men and women. Very, very important to keep this thought fresh in our heads. This, keep, this motiv motivates us to do more, to practice more, to sacrifice more. To give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. My brothers, Jannah is the creation of Allah. Paradise is the creation of Allah. The like of which nothing exists. Nothing. There's, there's no similitude. There's, there's, there's no like, you know, uh, this is like Jannah or like paradise. Impossible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to please someone. Allah, the creator of the words, wants to please someone. Can, can anything be compared? Can any, can any power it can be similar to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah decided, I want to please these people. This is my prize for these people. Nothing is like paradise, my brothers and sisters. Nothing is like this place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. It is impossible. Like the hadith says, where Rasulullah says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الصالحين, I have prepared for my righteous, pious slaves ma la ra'at, what no eye has ever seen. وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ And no ear has ever heard. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْدِ بَشَرٍ And the thought of which never crossed a human heart. Impossible. So when we say we're going to describe paradise, we will talk about paradise, we're actually scratching the surface. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to make things closer to our understanding, to our perception. When we describe rivers, fruits, you know, the women of paradise, the beauty of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these things exist 100%. Paradise exists 100%. But it's just something for us to, to understand with our perception. I always give this example to the brothers, you know. We say, subhanallah, if I taste the fruit once in a, one of a remote islands somewhere, no human being ever tasted before. No human being ever tasted this fruit. It's a very, very rare fruit. I taste it and you ask me, what does it, you know? Uh, what's the taste of this fruit like? All what I can do is what? I can say to you, uh, brother, Allah, it tastes like something. True I'll say, it tastes like apple. It tastes like mango. Uh, it has this mixture of taste between banana and something else. I can only make it close to you. But at the end of the day, if it has no like, I will stop. I will, the smell. Can, can you give me, can, can someone describe to me the smell of a certain food? The smell of a certain place? The smell of a certain perfume? Impossible. Or what you can say is, Allah brother, it, it smells like such and such. It, 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 it tastes like such and such. So what if it has no like? 
What if this thing you're trying to describe has no light? How can I describe it to you? Impossible. Likewise, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the fruits of Jannah, for example, <coughs> or the rivers of Jannah, there's no like. It's not like something we have in this world. Impossible. Impossible for a human being to perceive, for your brain to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you a step closer. Some sort of understanding of how beautiful paradise will be. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is that you have to surrender, to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of this world, anything beautiful in this world, anything that of amazing beauty you see, is nothing compared to paradise. Anything that is sweet, that is nice, any happy feeling you feel, is nothing compared to the feelings and happiness in paradise. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed this world. This world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created is not weigh, it does not weigh the wing of a mosquito in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. But Jannah is different, paradise is different. So this is the comparison for you. Maddunya fil akhirah illa kama yaj'alu ahadukum usbu'ahu fil yam fal yandhur bima yarja. Dunya compared to akhirah is like one of you putting his finger in the ocean. Takes it out again. What will you take up with you? One drop? And then it will dry? Nothing, nothing compared to the ocean. This is the comparison. There's no comparison basically. There's absolutely no, no closeness. It's, it's wrong to put them both on a scale. It is wrong. This is why we have to trust in Allah's Buddha, in Allah's ability, in Allah's generosity, in Allah's mercy. When He says, I have prepared something for human beings that no eye has ever seen, now we understand. <laughs> this should be enough for us to understand. Ah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, what Allah has prepared for the believing men and women. No eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard and the thought of which never crossed the human heart. Sometimes as kids, you know, it's just as kids you have this discussion with, you know, your cousin or your friends. Imagine we enter Jannah, what will you ask for? Ah, oh, I'll ask for this, I'll ask for that. I want this in Jannah. I want Allah to give me this. I want one million of this and one trillion of that. All cross what? All these thoughts cross the human heart. What does that mean? Jannah is better. Jannah is higher. Paradise is high. It's higher than you perceive. It's higher than you can understand. It's above your brain capacity to actually know. You can't. You can't. It's Allah's creation. It's, it's created. It's mixed with Allah's generosity. Impossible for something, for anything to, to come close to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for these believing men and women. This is why we, or oh, any description does not give Jannah its right. Any description is just for us to, some sort of understanding of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. Jannah, my brothers and sisters, paradise, the size of paradise, is, it's just the size, is above our perception. Rasulullah said, Allah says in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Hasten, run, rush. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ Hasten to forgiveness of, the forgiveness of your Lord. وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّةٍ مُتَّقِينَ And to a paradise, the width of which is the heavens and the earths. Not one heaven, not two heavens, all the heavens and all the earths. That's the width of paradise. What's the length? Never mentioned. Never, never spoken of. Maybe if, if the width is heavens and earth, that's any distance any human being can understand. If we can understand what it means heavens and earths. عرضها السماوات والأرض سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربك وجنة عرضها كعرض السماء والأرض وعدة الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله. prepared for those who believe in Allah and His messengers. the width of which is heavens and earths. this is why, you know, سبحان الله. we hear رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم say in the amazing hadith. والله it should be enough a motivation for every human soul in this world to work hard for this place. he says صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله عليه وسلم لموضع صوت أحدكم في الجنة خير من الدنيا وما فيه. just the space of your whip in paradise. If you circle, take your whip, make a big circle with it. this spot in paradise is better than the world and what it contains. صوت. in another version قيد. صوت. a whip. just that. let's say one meter squared. this one meter squared in paradise. It's better, not that, than your house, your castle, your mansion. It's better than the whole world and what it contains. صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Imagine if you don't get a meter squared, you actually get levels and ranks 
and Allahu Akbar palaces, the like of which no one can understand, no one can perceive. When Rasulullah says, just the levels of paradise, how big the levels are, how, how massive the levels are, Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah says, in Ahl al Jannah, la yatara'aw, the people of Jannah, they have different levels. The people of Jannah will see the rank of the people of the chambers. There's a rank in paradise, one of the high ranks in paradise. In Al Firdaus al A'la called Ahl al Ghuraf, people of the chambers, special rank. People of Jannah, normal, normal people of Jannah will start seeing the people of the chambers. Like you see the dim star in the horizon in the east or the west. See how sometimes you look in the east or the west and you start seeing a dim star, a shining star. This is the gap between the people of Jannah and people of Al Ghur of the chambers. That's the difference in ranks. How, how close is the closest star? How far is the actual closest star from Earth? Allahu Akbar. A dim star. A dim star. Maybe millions of light years, maybe millions of light years away. You never know how far the star is. SubhanAllah. Just one star. Like this. This is the gap. This is the distance. The people, the Sahaba hearing this, eager. Take them. They say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, Tilka manazul al-anbiya. Of course, these are, of course, Rasulullah, these are the ranks of prophets. They're not for us, people of the chambers, stars. No way, Ya Rasulullah. So it's only for the Anbiya and Prophet Sahih Rasulullah. He says, No. Barely suffer the Anbiya and Prophets. It's not for the Anbiya and Prophets. It's for anyone, any believing person believes in, believes in Allah and believes in the Prophets. This, these are the ranks for them. Allahu Akbar. Why is it that we always hear then? Brother, Allah, I just want to enter Jannah. Brother, all my dream is to enter Jannah. I'm working just to enter Jannah. Habibi, in dunya, in your world here, we don't accept the minimum rank. In our world here, if I say to you, do you want to be a king or one of the laymen? What do you say? King, king, please, king. Why? Everyone understands dunya. We know dunya. We know this world. I want to be of the highest. I work all my life to be of, you know, Mashallah, the top class of society. But in Jannah, no worries, brother, I just want to enter. Wrong intentions. This is why Rasulullah says in the hadith, إِذَا سَأَلْتُمُ اللَّهَ فَسَلُوهُ الْفِرْدَوْسَ الْأَعْلَى When you ask Allah, what do you ask for? Just enter paradise now. Ask for Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. The highest rank of paradise. The highest place in paradise. Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. سَقْفُهَ عَرْشُ الرَّحْمَانِ The ceiling of which is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This should be the intention of every Muslim. When you ask, when you make dua, when you work, you work, and this is your intention. Inshallah, Ya Rabb, you, you never ever deprive me of being one of the people of Al Firdaus Al A'la, this high rank in Jannah. But nowadays, no, because dunya has overtaken our love for Akhirah, our love for the hereafter, we say, I just want to enter. If I enter, I'm happy. True, like I said, one meter squared, your, the space of your whip is better than this dunya and what it contains, but this should not be your intention. Your intention should be, you should aim high for the highest levels. This is how every Muslim should function. Jannah, my brothers, like I said, it's unbelievable beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the, 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 the ulama and the rishis, they say, subhanAllah, the, the hasba, the ground of paradise, is made from pearls and gems, saffron. The buildings in paradise, your palaces in paradise, not like your normal house, the biggest mansion on earth, the biggest house on earth, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I want you to imagine the best and most luxurious house in this world. Absolutely nothing. It should not even be put on the scale with a house in paradise. One house in paradise. Rasulullah says in the hadith, Inna lil mu'mini fil jannah la khayna. The tent, not the house, not the palace, the tent of a believing man in paradise is made from a hollow pearl. One piece of pearl, it's been made hollow. The height of which is 60 miles in the sky. One hollow pearl. Every believing man in this pearl, in this tent of his, he has wives. 
they actually pass it from one to the other. From the distance between them, they can't see one another. One hollow pearl, 60 miles in the sky. That's your tent. Imagine your palace. How do you get the palace in Jannah? How do I get the bait in Jannah? Subhanallah. In this world, for you to buy a mansion, Allah, how many hours of work, how much stress, trouble, nights you have to stay up to get the house in paradise? Very, very cheap. 12 raka'at a day. 12 raka'at of nafl salat a day. Sunnah salat, 12 raka'at a day. Every day you can get the house in paradise. How easy. Some narrations, you read Qulhu Allah 10 times. You get the house in paradise. How much of them have we made? How much of them have you, uh, were you eager to get? You will find days pass by and no one does anything. Yeah, it's a, a mansion in paradise, a palace in paradise. Wallah, I know brother, but I forget. Forget? The, imagine if I say, every time you say, you get a mansion in this dunya. What will happen? People will stop talking. The whole world will stop talking. People will stop doing anything. Everyone will say, Allah, Allah. Let's see, this will be the job of everyone. Why? A mansion in paradise. I'll be the richest man on earth. But with Jannah, oh, brother, wallah, I forgot. Wallah, I couldn't. Uh, I get lazy sometimes. Why? Because this desire I'm speaking of is not there. It's not there. The fruits of Jannah, the trees in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah says in the hadith, one tree in paradise. One tree. For Jannah shajar. One tree. The strong horse, a strong, fast horse, will run for 100 years, 100 years, and will not cut and finish its shade. One tree. 100 years, a fast horse will be running, and it will not cut its shade, finish its shade. One tree, how do you get the tree in Jannah? Is it a big job? Is it very hard? One subhanallah. One alhamdulillah. One la ilaha illallah. One Allahu Akbar. Every time you remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a tree, a tree in paradise. Why is that we're not working? Subhanallah, just laziness. Just this lack of motivation is not there. We, the, we, the, the, the belief, the conviction of Muhammad Rasulullah is missing. If we believe, I'm telling you, people will not stop thinking, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But very, very little work. A lot of work for dunya, very little work for the hereafter. Very little work for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that this Jannah is full of rivers, the like of which no eye has ever seen. مَثَلُ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي وُعِدَ الْمُتَّقُونَ فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرِ آسِرٍ Example of the, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised for the believing men and women. For the believers, it's full of, has rivers, not one river, rivers of water. Allahu Akbar, that you can't pollute, you can't contaminate. You can't corrupt this water. مِنْ مَاءٍ غَيْرِ آسٍ وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ لَبَنٍ لَمْ يَتَغَيَّرْ طَعْمٍ And rivers of milk that doesn't, you know, doesn't change its taste after a while. وَأَنْهَارٌ مِنْ خَمْرٍ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ And rivers of wine. Joy for whoever, whoever drinks it. Absolute entertainment. Doesn't give you a headache. لا يصدعون عنها ولا ينزفون No headaches, no hangovers next day. No trouble. You don't start vomiting like alcohol in this world. Absolute joy, absolute entertainment, absolute happiness. And rivers of honey, pure. Undescribable. Asal musaffa. All fruits, whatever they want. And forgiveness from the Lord. What more should any human being ask for? What more should not evade us? What do we need to hear to make us want this place and die for this place and work hard to arrive there? What more do you need to hear when you hear this description from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah tells us just, just for us to understand that Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a discussion between Kalimullah Musa alayhi salam spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly Musa alayhi salam asks, O oh Allah, Ya Allah, ma adna ahlul jannati manzila. O Prophet, O oh Allah, what is the minimum rank in Jannah? The minimum, the least person, the least na'im in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the minimum, the minimum person, the last person, 
In some narrations, he is the last person to enter paradise. Who is this person? I want you to imagine. It is a person who probably spent billions of years in Jahannam. He's a Muslim that said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Maybe never prayed in his life. Maybe done, he did every single sin, every single sin in the book. All haram, all his life. But says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. This person, after billions of years, will be taken to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to him, Go and enter paradise. So this man will go and say, Ya Rabbi, he will say, Ya Allah, how can I enter Jannah? When people have already, People have been living in paradise for billions of years. Everyone arrived there, took his chair, took his land, took his wives, took everything he wants. It's full, it's full, Ya Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go, enter Jannah. The, the person will say the same thing. And Allah will ask, imagine, just Allah, how generous is Allah? Allah will ask, Atarda, look at the words, read between the lines, have hearts. Allah say, Atarda, do you accept? This is a sinner. This is a person who has spent billions of years in Jahannam. Allah will say to him, Atarda, do you accept? Are you happy with? Ayakuna laka, mithlu mulki malikin min muluk dunya, do you accept to be to be given like a king of this world, a monarch of this world. This is the last person, the worst Muslim ever. The last person to enter Jannah. The last person to leave Jahannam. Do you accept that you'll be given to, uh, as a king of the, that lived in this world? The man, imagine spending years in Jahannam. Imagine spending one day in Jahannam. One day in hellfire. The man could not, could not believe himself. Of course, Ya Allah. Of course I'm happy, Allah. Allah will say to him, Laka dhalika. This is for you. Wa mithluhu. Wa mithluhu. Wa mithluhu. Wa mithluhu. Wa mithluhu. You, have, you will get this. And the like of. 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 Five times. On the fifth time, the slave will jump. His heart will jump. He says, Radhitu Rabbi. I'm happy, Allah. Of course I'm happy, Allah. Allah will say, Laka dhalika wa ashratu amthali. I will give you this and ten times more. This is the minimum, the minimum rank in Jannah that you will be, that you will be given ten times as a monarch that controlled this world, a king that lived, controlled all this world, ten times. In the other narration of the Mas'ud, Rasulullah Sallam, when he says this, the Rasulullah will say, "I will give you this and ten times more." He says, "Faraaitu Rasulullah Sallam." I saw Rasulullah Sallam smiling, happy, his face was like the moon. فَرَأَيْتُهُ ضَحِكَ حَتَّى بَدَتْ نَوَاجِدُهُ I saw Rasulullah smiling until his premolars appeared. His nawajid sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَالَ هَادَ And then he says, This is the least rank in paradise. هَادَ أَدْنَا أَهْلُ جَنَّةِ مَنْزِلِ هَادَ أَدْنَا أَهْلُ جَنَّةِ مَنْزِلِ This is the least rank in paradise. Ten times a king of this world. Imagine the highest rank. Imagine people who put some effort in. Who actually worked hard had this motivation, had this understanding, were smart, you know, made the right decision in life and worked hard for the hereafter. Musa alayhi salam asks, فَأَعْلَاهُمْ مَنْزِلَ يَا رَبِّ How about the high, the high rank, ya Allah? Allah says, أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَرَدْتُ They are the ones that I chose. I wanted. غَرَسْتُ قَرَامَتَهُمْ بِيَدِي I have planted the honor with my own hands. غَرَسْتُ قَرَامَتَهُمْ بِيَدِي فَلَمْ تَرَ عَيْنْ وَلَمْ تَسْمَعْ أُذُنْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرًا No eye has ever saw, no ear has ever heard, and the thought of which never crossed a human heart. Meaning, what does that mean? Impossible to explain. Maybe the Arabic words, the words that we know and understand, are unable to explain what I have prepared for these people. People that of the higher rank. And still, we find people struggling in the choice. Should I? Should I practice my deen? Should I become religious? Should I turn to Allah? La ilaha illa. What more motivation do you want in your life? How much more do you want to hear about paradise? To make you, you know, your heart and soul and everything in your body and everything in your mind and heart to want to go to paradise. What more do you want to hear? You enter paradise directly. When people of Jannah enter Jannah, you nadi munadi. A call is made. I want you to live these moments. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us, blesses us subhanahu wa ta'ala from His mercy, 
and we are one of those people. Imagine yourself entering paradise and then a call is being made. Inna lakum an fala tamutu abada. Last today, you are allowed to. You will live, you will live, and you will never die. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَصِحُّوا فَلَا تَسْقَمُوا أَبَدًا From now on, you all be healthy. Never sick. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَشِبُّوا فَلَا تَهْرَمُوا أَبَدًا From now on, you always stay young. You will never age. You never increase in your age. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ أَنْ تَنْعَمُوا فَلَا تَبْأَسُوا أَبَدًا From now on, you will be delighted. In na'im, in luxury. No more misery. Never misery again. Imagine hearing that call. Imagine being told this by the angels. See, finished. All hardships gone. يُؤْتَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ As the Rasulullah says in the Hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, يُؤْتَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِأَبْعَسِ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ Allah will bring on Judgment Day the لَمِزِرَابِلْ as they say. The person that lived the worst of the worst lives. Absolute misery. From the beginning of his life to the end. Not one moment of happiness. But he is one of the believing people. One of the people of paradise. فَيُغْمَسْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ غَمْسَ Allah will dip him for one second into Jahan, into Jannah. And then Allah will ask him, هَلْ رَأَيْتَ بُؤْسًا قَطْ Did you pass by any misery? Did you face any hardship? This man will say, لَا وَاللَّهِ يَا رَبِّي Finish. No, Allah, never ever, not one second in my life of misery. Never tasted misery in my life. Never tasted hardship in my life. One second. Imagine living in paradise. Imagine being... One of the dwellers of, of paradise. Why? Why is it that this motivation is not there? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. For you not to want to be there, not striving to be there, something is wrong in our understanding. We have miscalculated something down the track somewhere. That's a call. يَأْكُلُ أَهْلُ As Rasulullah says in the hadith, يَأْكُلُ أَهْلُ الْجَنَّةِ فِيهَا وَيَشْرَبُونَ People in Jannah will start eating and drinking fruit, the taste of which you never tasted before in your life. Drink, Allahu Akbar. Never ever before. Never before you tested this. You, 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 you tested this drink before in your life. Ya kulwahlu jannati fiha wa shrabun. So where does this all go? How do we how do we you know relieve ourselves? Do we go to the toilet? What happens? Walaya, walaya tagawatun. They don't defecate, khalas. No more toilet. Walaya bulun. No more no no more, you know, people urinate. In this world, Allah it's disgusting. The king of kings, he has the best meal in his life, goes to the most expensive restaurant in the world, has the best food he ever tasted before, after half an hour, one hour, there's some humiliation involved. True or not, he has to get close to filth. Something, an ugly smell, an ugly sight. We try to make our toilets like thrones. It's like thrones nowadays, you know, your castle in your house. At the end of the day, there's always some sort of humiliation. It's a humiliation. In Jannah, no more. No more feces, no more urine, nothing as such. No more phlegm from your nose. How, how will we, you know, all the food you're eating, you're eating, mashallah, where is it going? It turns into either a burp, you give a burp, it has a smell of musk. Or you start sweating. Rush. You start sweating and it has a smell of musk. Fragrance of musk, like you've never smoked before in your life. This is, this is how you... يُلْهَمُونَ التَّسْبِيحِ وَالتَّهْلِيلِ كَمَا يُلْهَمُونَ النَّفْسِ Person asks, will we worship Allah in Jannah? Will we pray? Will we have to do, you know? Will we have to do my salat in paradise? No. See how you breathe now? Inhale, exhale, you don't have to think, you don't have to prepare while you're sleeping, while you're daydreaming, you're not concentrating. Likewise, you will start praising Allah, glorifying Allah like you breathe. Absolute easy, absolutely easy in paradise. You worship Allah with no hardship. You don't have to force yourself to worship Allah. It's, 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 it's given, it's a given. Subhanallah. What more do we want? What more do we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the, all your desires are there fulfilled. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ وَلَكَ مَا تَشْتَحَتْ نَفْسُكْ وَلَذَّتْ عَيْنُ Whatever your, your soul desires, any desire you want, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you in paradise. 
the women of Paradise, of course, something all, all the males are looking for. Allahu Akbar, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believing men in Paradise. Wahurun in Kamthari Lulu il Maknu. Like pearls and gems. Like Allahu Akbar. No one can describe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to create beauty. Can some can, can something stop Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Can there be anything the like of which in this world? I want you to imagine Miss Universe. It's absolutely nothing. It is wrong to compare any any human any human you know female to one of the women in paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his for the believing men. <coughs> Rasulullah says in the hadith in Bukhari, in Bukhari, that if one, if one of the women of paradise actually takes a glance to earth, she gives one look to earth, it will illuminate whatever, she will illuminate whatever is between the heavens and the earth. All illumination. She will fill all this with fragrance. And the scarf on, the, on her head is better than the word that what it contains. Just the scarf on her head, the veil on her head. It's better than the word that what it contains. In Bukhari the hadith, authentic hadith, one of the highest rank of authenticity. Subhanallah, what more do you want to hear? What more motivation do our, our sisters start getting jealous? They say, ah, uh, this, why this Hurayn, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appeared? There's no jealousy in paradise. One of the, beauty, one of the beauties of, of Jannah is what? No ill feelings. All the jealousy. Any form, any sort of disease in the heart of hasad, jealousy, envy, Hatred, anything as such is taken from the heart. Only pure hearts are left. Only good pure hearts are left. No jealousy, no hatred. No one, no one is upset from anyone. Everyone is happy. Everyone is glorifying Allah. Everyone is entertained. Everyone gets whatever he wants. And the, for, for, for our sisters, the believing women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, as, the, as the ayah says, Inna ansha'na hunna insha'a. All the women of, of, of this world, they imagine this is the beauty of the Hurayn, the women of this world will be a hundred times more beautiful than the Hurayn. Maybe a million times more beautiful. In some narrations, the comparison is like the light of a candle and the light of the sun. In some, Rasulullah, sallam, Rasulullah says in the hadith that they will be more beautiful. Why? Because these women, they have fasted, they have sacrificed, they have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have paid charity, and the women of paradise never did this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates the ranks, elevates the ranks of this. She'll be your wife in the hereafter. Allahu Akbar, all of this na'im, what more do we want to hear? What more should motiv motivate the believing man to work hard? And of course, like I said, no matter how much we describe, the story doesn't end. But the most beautiful, the biggest present Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believing men and the believing women is that judgment day comes, people enter Jannah. As the hadith says, the Rasulullah says, when people of Jannah enter Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to them. Allah calls out to them and says, Ya ahl al Jannah, O people of Jannah, turiduna shay'an azidukum. Do you want anything else? Man, this is question on judgment day. Just this question in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king of kings, is asking you, do you want anything more? Any more pleasure? Anything I can do? Subhanallah. Turiduna shay'an azidukum? People of Jannah in awe, not believing themselves. They say, Subhanallah. Alam tubayyib Oh Allah, you have, you have, you've, you've made our faces bright. Alam tudkhilna al-jannah wa tunajjina min al-nar. You made us enter paradise. You saved us from Jahannam, from hellfire. فَيُكْشَفَ الْحِجَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts the veil. فَمَا أُعْطُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّظَرِ إِلَى رَبِّهِ They want 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts the veil and they see Allah, they realize that they were never giving, given anything more beautiful and better and of a, of, a, of a higher rank than actually seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the best price. And this is the worst feeling, the worst deprivation people of Jahannam will be in, that they are not allowed to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are veiled from seeing Allah. But the believing men and the believing women, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Rasulullah says, they will see Allah exactly like we see the full moon. You don't have, you don't, there's no any inconvenience, any hardship to see Allah. Clear as the biggest prize, the biggest present Allah has prepared for us, for the believing men and women when they enter paradise. What more do we want? One of, one of the na'eems of Jannah is the, the thought. Subhanallah, imagine yourself. As Allah says in the Quran, yanzurun. Verily, the, the abrar, the righteous people, the good believing men and women, they are in extreme joy, extreme happiness. Unbelieving, un, uh, unbelievable happiness they're in. yanzurun. They're sitting on the reclining, on their thrones, on the couches. Yanzurun, they look. They're looking around them, you know. You can actually see the brightness of Naim, of luxury on their faces. You look at them, you say, this is the person of Jannah. From the radiance of his face, from the happiness that's popping out of his face. Subhanallah. They're given the, subhanallah, the wine, like we described before. Nothing, nothing, nothing like the wine of this world. These people will be sitting there and start remembering the, as you know, as the boys call it, the, the good old days, you know. Remember in this world we used to pray? Remember we used to go to this masjid? Remember we used to go there and do this and we used to read Quran? Imagine yourself in Jannah reclining on these thrones, discussing issues of this world, meeting your friends, even the luxury of seeing your enemies in this world. People that inf infidels, people that didn't have deen, that harmed you, abused you, done something wrong to you, made fun of you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِينٌ Allah says a story, he tells us a story in the Quran of a, of a person who says, oh Allah, you know, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Groups in Jannah started talking to one another, you know, ask him Allah, one of them said, Inni kana li I had a companion in this world. He used to make fun of me. He said, Do you believe in all these you know, fairy tales, all these stories? If we die and uh, turn into, you know, we become turab, we become dust and, and bone, do you think we're going to live another life? Allah will actually ask us, Impossible. They're lying to you. It's all a story, it's a fairy tale. إِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعَيْنًا قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ Directly, at your order, at your wish. You know, a screen. A screen is presented. You see Jahannam. You see your friend that you, you used to make fun of. You see this person that used to harm you and abuse you and, 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 and. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, if you understand the beauty of these feelings. Success, success. True success. True success. قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ فَاطَّلَعَ فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ He looked, he found him in the, in the pit of Jahannam. فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ He called him, he speaks to him. قَالَ تَاللَّهِ إِنْ كِتَّ لَتُرْدِينَ آه. Where are you now, Habibi? Remember the days you used to make fun of me. Remember the days you used to abuse me, harm me, do this to me. Now is it true? Are we dying or not? Are we, will be questioned or not? Success, success, true success. At the end of the ayat, Allah says, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For this, for this ending, for this result, people should work hard. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْمُبِينَ This is the true success. لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For this, people should work hard. Allah says in the other, وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ If you will compete, if there's a competition, should it be in dunya, who has more houses, who has a faster car, who has a better looking wife? No, my brothers and sisters. This is not the competition Muslims should be in. وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلْيَتَنَافَسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In this and the like, for this result, for this paradise, people should compete. Like I said at the beginning of the talk, a huge difference 
We do not proclaim with our tongues and what we have in our hearts. You can say, I want Jannah all day and all, all night. If you don't work hard, these are signs. You're not working hard enough. You don't have enough faith to motivate you, to move you, to make you get off your bed in the middle of the night and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for paradise. This is what we should be competing in, working hard for Allah's pleasure, Allah's happiness, Allah's paradise. So we should all do our best, sacrifice the most, and always keep this topic in our discussions, in your gatherings, with your wife, with your kids. Give Jannah precedence. Give this thought precedence, yeah, utmost importance. Always, someone speaks about this dunya, then I want the paradise. SubhanAllah, one of the ulama, you know, he, he went to one of the very, very, very famous, big, highly civilized countries of our time. And he's a humble alim, a simple alim, a simple scholar of deen. And he was invited to a huge mansion of one of the very, very rich men in the world. And everyone with him in the gathering, everyone is, you know, Allahu Akbar entered this house. They start whistling. Allahu Akbar, what's this man? Look at the, how big the kitchen is, how big the reception is. Pool, mashallah, whatever. Everyone, you know, is amazed, taken by the beauty of his palace, the beauty of his mansion. This pious religious alim said, Subhanallah. If this is what a human being that goes to the toilet, that's absolutely weak, gets diarrhea, yeah, he, he doesn't know, he has no control of anything in his life. This is what a human being has prepared for his guests. Imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believing pious slaves of Allah. What has Allah prepared for us? Always, someone speaks about dunya, bring back the topic of akhirah. Become a da'i to Allah, call to Allah. Someone says this is beautiful. Allah, brother. It's absolutely nothing compared to what Allah has prepared for us in paradise. Fruits and na'im, the like of which no, no one can ever describe. All of us, inshallah, should ask Allah sincerely every day. Make it your habit to ask Allah, Oh Allah, give me al-firdaus al a'la. If you, if you say, I love Jannah, I want Jannah, but you're not making dua, you're asking, asking Allah for it. How is it you improve your case on Judgment Day? Every night, every night of your life, there should be some portion of this night given. To, to this dua, to asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please, Ya Allah, give me al firdaus al Very, very, very important. All of us ready for this, inshallah? All of us make these intentions. Ask Allah sincerely and work hard and sacrifice all you can to reach this prize, this commodity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared. Nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yaj'alna al ladhina istam'oon al qawla fa'attabu'una ahsana wa ask Allah to make us from those who practice what we hear. What they hear, jazakum la khayru wa rakum la fikum subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rakum سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله